talking about Japan, the area I have chosen is democracy and militarism, rise of political parties, failure of democracy, rise of militarism. And I will be uh, speaking a bit about the Second Sino-Japanese War. From 1890s through the 1920s, a hybrid politics of imperial democracy emerged in Japan. The political order was anchored by a modernized imperial institution which looked like the British model. But with the beginning of 1929 till 1932 and for much forward, a combination of shocks took place. There was depression, intense conflict, rise of militarism, assassination of prime ministers and uh, capitalist leaders. And the total political situation of Japan became stagnant during this period. By the end of 1930s, political parties, business association, labor unions, tenant unions were replaced by a series of state controlled mass bodies intended to mobilize a holy war against China. In October 1929, the New York stock market clashed and during this time of global crisis, there was total crisis in the Japanese political order. This world depression was coincided in a destructive fashion with the recent initiative in the Japanese financial policy. The Mensisto government under Prime Minister Hamaguchi had come to power in 1929 and it wanted to implement two policies in order to recover the stagnant political and economic condition of Japan. Firstly, the domestic prices would be forced down and exports would be encouraged by controlling the money supply and secondly international trade and investment would be stabilized by returning to a fixed rate of exchange so we see that during this time there was a total chaos in the total economy of japan the Zaibatsu banks, they behaved in a very peculiar way, which was economically smart, but politically it was damaging the total situation. On the other hand, it is seen that the industrial output went down. There was a total loss in the total industrial sector. Another thing we see during this time that shopkeepers, retail trade, wholesale trade, everything went down. So economic condition was in a stagnant stage during the discussed period. Another thing we see that agricultural production also went down during this time, especially rice and barley, production of rice and barley fell up to 43%. On the other hand, small scale business during this time also became stagnant. And because the purchasing power of the people were no longer there the total business condition of japan became a, came to a standstill on the other hand we see that they, there were labor problems labor disputes in the industry in the factories because people were losing their jobs and they did not have the power to purchase things so there was a total chaos in the japanese economy resulting from the economic depression worldwide on the other hand, we see from 26 to 30, during this period, small-scale manufacturing business also came to a standstill. So the economic condition further deteriorated during this time and people were disgusted with the ineffective political system of Japan and both the parties, both the political parties, the party in power, the Mensesto and the opposition party Sayaku, both the parties were unable to control this rampant political disorder of Japan. And it seems that uh, Imperial Middle Class Federated Alliance, they were speaking that the government was trying to destroy the whole situation and the government was betraying the common people. They were saying, because the total condition of Japan deteriorated further. The middle class people who supported the government financially and defended the country from a long time, they were disgusted with the whole situation because they were thinking that the government was betraying the people and they want a revolution of an economic type. 
and they wanted to bring about the prosperity of the country by totally changing the situation. They thought by changing the whole situation of Japan, the condition would improve. There was bankruptcy in the shopkeepers. Men and women were losing their jobs. There were labor disputes. Agrarian struggle took place in an unprecedented number. There was intense labor problems throughout the country. Factories were closing down. The workers and the laborers organized themselves to bring about a change in the country. The, on the other hand, we see that the behavior of the university students were also changing because the Japanese government was thought that these university students were trying to accept the Marxian ideas. So, they, so this sort of a thought feared the government or the government became very much anxious because they thought that the university students were accepting the Marxian ideas and they would be going through a communist revolution later. On the other hand, it seems that due to this tension, due to this anxiousness, many students were arrested and they were put into jail. The Ministry of Education dissolved the Tokyo University Newman Society. After this situation, the student protest broke out at different universities of Japan and ultimately between 1930 and 31 there were a number of students protests and students uprising in the Japanese university. The students were not concerned with the national politics or the government policies but they were mostly concerned with the campus politics of Japan. So we see that there was a total chaos in the political and social life of the Japan. And Furthermore, we see that the students were undergoing a great problem because the Ministry of Education was trying to control these students' bodies. And they were trying to monitor the students and they are trying to suppress the students' protest. And furthermore, it is seen that by 1934, the students' movement came to an end. In 1930, a well-known Japanese social critic Oya Sochi neatly summoned up the belief that Japanese society was facing unprecedented crisis. So there was crisis everywhere in Japan. On the other hand, uh, we see that people thought that in order to recover Japan from this sort of a crisis, military was the only solution. And they thought that military, if the military comes to power, then the total situation would be controlled by the military and this sort of an attitude of the people intensified and they wanted to bring about military power in Japan. On the other hand, we see in Japan in 1930, the London Naval Treaty intensified the situation furthermore and Prime Minister was assassinated by the naval officers as a result of this incident. In the period between 1880 and 1920, you talked of the hybrid politics of democracy. Why do you call it hybrid? During that time, democratic power was at its fullest. And during that time, uh, the democratic power in Japan reached its height, you know. So, we call this period, we have chosen this period as a hybrid democratic period. Because after that, Japan faced a number of shocks. Okay. And then the holy war against China, how did Japan justify the war as a holy war? Japan actually wanted, there was a lack of natural resources in Japan and lack of living space, lack of market. And they thought that if they were a war against China, it would be a holy war in this sense because they would be doing this war for their own industrialization and for their own people. So this was, so they quote unquote, they uh, spoke about this holy war against China. Can we see a parallel with um, Hitler's Operation Barbarossa in this context because he also invaded Russia supposedly for Lebens from living space? Yes, of so, course. We can say, we can compare this with Hitler, this situation with Hitler, of course we can. Because actually Japan wanted to, wanted space for her people. Mm. Because you know, if you see the Japanese map, there is no space. There is no market, there is no uh, raw material for Japan's industrialization and they thought this as a holy war because they didn't find any guilt. 
There was no sense of guilt in this sort of a war with China. Now you were talking about the stagnancy of economy in Japan, Japan during this period. So how far was the economy, uh, this economic crisis dependent on the global crisis, the Great Depression and how far was it uh, an internal crisis of Japan? It was mostly internal crisis of Japan but because the global situation, because the New York stock market had clashed and because the total global situation was very intense. So this intense global situation affected the internal market and the internal economy of Japan. Though it was something very internal but still it, the global crisis had an overall effect on the Japanese economy. You talked about the student movements in Japanese universities in this period. In the early 1930s, even in China, student movements were going on. So, uh, what the J Japanese student movements influenced by the Chinese student movements? The Japanese government thought that the student movement of Japan was influenced by the Chinese student movement because they thought that the students were trying to um, follow the Marxian ideology of China or the communist ideology of China, so they feared that this might create a more intense situation in Japan. So it was the thinking of the Japanese government, whether it was really influenced or whether it was not, that is a different episode. But the Japanese government thought that the student movement were mostly influenced by the Marxian ideology. The rise of militarism in Japan in 1930s was the outgrowth of a long historical process because Japan had a long route of military rule in Japan. The Japanese had the experience of staying under the obedience of authority. Hundreds of years the Japanese were under the rule of the samurai, so they already had the background of militarism in Japan. And they had the experience of staying under the men of sort. So naturally, they accepted the claims of military in the national leadership. And they thought that if the military comes to power, then certain problems which Japan faced during those period would be solved by the military. On the other hand, the Japanese were further threatened by foreign threats. So in order to reduce these foreign threats, they thought that military was the only solution. And because they knew that might is right. As such, the Meiji leaders were mostly ex-samurai who learned the necessity of a strong military force. In time, they carried out important military reforms and created that the military should be made stronger equal to that of the Germans. Inevitably, the military service influenced the common men of Japan and they wanted to come under the military rule. There were some institutional loopholes also which helped to influence the militarism in Japan. The Meiji constitution of 1889 gave an autonomy to the armed service. It stated that the military had the right to have direct access to the government. On the other whole, there was a second loophole. The 1900 degree said that the ex-generals should come to the power and they should be the ministry of army and navy. So naturally the military was gradually gaining ground. They were gradually becoming very powerful in Japan. Furthermore, the overseas expansions which was necessary in Japan at that time also led to the rise of militarism. First of all, there was lack of raw material in Japan. There was lack of living space in Japan. So in order to further these, overseas expansion was very necessary and Japan had chosen China and Korea in order to expand its territory and furthermore it is seen that during this period the Manchurian crisis or the Manchurian expedition of 1931 had further emphasized the rise of militarism in Japan because after the Manchurian crisis the power prestige and status of Japan had increased especially the powers of military has increased to a great deal.
after the Manchurian crisis, there was a total change in the Japanese scenario. The economic and social life of Japan improved, export improved, industrialization improved. There was a total improvement in the Japanese society and economy during after the Manchurian crisis. So we see that the Manchurian crisis was an important juncture in which we see how the Japanese militaries intensified the situation and how the Ma Japanese military had helped Japan to increase its power and prestige in the world scenario or in the world politics. On the other hand, after the Manchurian crisis, there was a nationwide improvement in Japan. Industrialization, business, banking service improved small-scale business, retail business, wholesale business improved. Japan had further space for expansion. Japan had lots of raw material for her industries. Further, we see after the Manchurian crisis, the political situation of Japan has also improved to a lot. There was a new system known as the election purification campaign. In this election purification campaign, the whole election system was monitored by the government. On the other hand, there was another trend we see after 1930, that single party rule in Japan. And during this time, the ruling party, Mincesto, the opposition party, Seiko, they could not improve their status. During this time, a party known as the social mass party of the lower class people gradually improved and they tried to control the whole situation. On the other hand, we see that the military through a coup d'etat wanted to overthrow the civilian government. But ultimately, the civilian government accepted the demands of the military in order to stop an internal conflict in the country. So though military came and they tried to solve certain solutions of Japan during the discuss period, but ultimately military dictatorship could not be established in Japan. And after Manchurian crisis, the whole situation further improved. There was improvement in the political sphere, there was improvement in the social sphere, there was improvement in the economic sphere, which had deteriorated due to the World Economic Depression, which had deteriorated during the 1929 to 30. During this period, the total situation of Japan had deteriorated. There was deterioration in the political sphere, there was deterioration in the economic sphere, there was deterioration in the social sphere. But Manchurian crisis was an important incident in Japan which brought about total change in the Japanese society, economy and politics. Furthermore, military solution also solved certain intense problems which the Japanese were facing at that time. And the Japanese realized that if military comes to power, if military comes and takes over the power, then certain problems would be solved. This way, militarism became powerful in Japan. On the other hand, we see that on 7 July 1937, the Second Sino-Japanese War broke out. After the Second Sino-Japanese War, it seems the power and prestige also increased and after that the military could not control the whole of Japan because military dictatorship was not totally accepted in Japan. Then the rise of military rule, um, was it mainly dependent on the long tradition of militarism in Japan or um, more on the global collapse of democracy that we witnessed in 19? 30s that led to the rise of Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin and so many dictators. But Japan already had a long tradition. Japan had a historical mil route 
the rise of militarism can be traced back to its historical root because for 100 years the Japanese were under the rule of the swordman or the samurai. So already the, they had a mindset of staying under authority. So when they saw a crisis in the, to, in the political, social and economic sphere, they thought that the military would be the only solution because already they had a background of military rule or the samurai rule. So, was the immediate situation more important or the long tradition? No, they had, the immediate situation was important, but still they had a long tradition also. The immediate situation demanded military rule, but to accept military rule, they had the background or the mindset was already prepared in Japan. So, when you are talking about the failure of democracy in Japan, we can almost draw a parallel with the collapse of the Weimar Republic and then um, the failure of democracy in Japan. Then why is it that Japan never witnessed the rise of a single dictator and why is it that Hitler was born like uh, the so There was a lack of leadership in Japan. There were different political parties, but these political parties were not efficient to give rise to a big leader. So military was the only solution according to the Japanese people. Japanese workers, you said they were dissatisfied with the democracy because of the economic crisis that was going on. Then uh, what about um, Japanese capitalists and big businessmen? Did they want democracy or did they want militarism? Because uh, they could perhaps influence uh, important economic decisions by funding the different political parties in the democracy they so were not uh, they were not wanting the military power to military to come to power they were more interested in a democratic system and they were criticized everywhere the big businessmen but the small businessmen retailers wholesale small wholesalers they were totally affected by the whole situation so they wanted militarism? Yes, they wanted militarism. The common man of Japan wanted militarism. There was a hybrid democratic system from in Japan from 1889 to 1920s. But after 1920s, late 1920s especially, there was a great shock. There was worldwide economic depression. There was assassination of prime ministers. There was assassination of the leading capitalist. There was a depression, worldwide depression. The total situation of Japan was affected. There was great tension in the economic, in the social and in the political sphere of Japan. Industrialization was affected. Banking system was affected. Wholesale business was affected, retail business was affected, shopkeepers were affected, factory workers were affected. So there was a chaos in the whole situation. On the other hand, the political parties, the ruling party, the opposition party was not accepted by the people. Further, when the Prime Minister Hamaguchi accepted in 1930 the London Naval Disarmament Conference and signed a treaty that minimized the naval power of Japan, this intensified the situation and the Prime Minister was murdered. So ordinary people wanted a solution and they thought that militarism was the only solution. The Japanese had a long tradition of militarism. They were under the samurais, they were under the swordmen for hundreds of years. So the background was already created. Furthermore, the military people, they thought that with their coming to power or with their controlling the power, they could solve the intense crisis of Japan. Furthermore, Japan had to go for an overseas expansion because there was lack of living space, there was lack of natural resources, there was lack of market. And Japan had chosen China and Korea for her expansionist policy and ultimately the Manchurian crisis of September 1931 had solved many problems that Japan had already faced. The tension was reduced, export improved, industrialization improved, agricultural production has raised, small factories, big factories, workshops, shopkeepers, there was total improvement in this sphere also.
workers got their job. Furthermore, Japan got a market. Japan got the natural resources for her industry. On the other hand, in the political sphere also, there was further improvement. There was the election purification campaign in which the election purification movement was monitored by the government and the police. On the other hand, there was the rise of a new party known as the Social Mass Party of the lower class people which satisfied the demands of the people and people supported this Social Mass Party. On the other hand, the military through a coup d'etat wanted to overthrow the civilian government but the civilian government accepted the demands of the military in order to stop an internal conflict and ultimately the military could not do away with the civilian government because the military itself was a monolithic structure and they had some internal problems and ultimately the military dictatorship was not established in Japan. <music>